Thank you for listening. I'm Mike Strauss, a.k.a. Strauss21, and this is Apollo Tosh Mahal. We are the guys from the Did You See That Shit Mixed Martial Arts podcast. We know you're going to like the interview, so be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all the social media platforms, as well as the Missing Time Productions YouTube channel. And don't forget to go to didyouseethatshit.com for a complete rundown of all of our content. Right, Apollo? Yeah. I want to introduce Bellator middleweight Gerald Harris, 25 and 6, coming off of a... Uh, it was a tough outing here at uh, Bellator 198, but I thought, nonetheless, he was one of the highlights of the night, Mr. Gerald Harris. What is going on, sir? Hey, what's up, man? Sorry, I was uh, been moving a lot at my gym and laid down for a second. I almost missed this interview. <laughs> it's all good, man. Uh, yeah, I appreciate you doing this. You're a super busy man as of late. I want to uh, congratulate you. You signed a, a new multi-fight deal with Bellator, right? Yeah, man. Like you said, I wanted to take advantage of the opportunity and... Uh, it was kind of a highlight of the evening. It, unfortunately, I came up short, but everybody saw that. You know, I was down to fight, man, and I didn't go out there for a paycheck. Um, I went out there to, you know, gain some fans and impress Bellator. I just wish I had more time to do it. Yeah, you definitely did. You did impress, man. And, uh, you know, you mentioned you wish you had more time to do it. I think you said you had to lose 30 pounds in four days to make that 188-pound contracted weight, right? Yeah, it was a lot, man. I can't put an exact number on it, only because I don't know if I'll get in trouble. Okay. So um, <laughs> in those three days, man, definitely a lot of weight. Uh, but I'm a wrestler. We're used to it. Um, this water weight, um, it was hard. It was the hardest weight cut I've ever had. Wow. But it had nothing to do with the fight. So I kind of avoid talking about the weight cut because mm-hmm. people think I'm making excuses. You know, that, that fight would have went whatever way, you know, minus the weight cut. <laughs> No, I definitely don't think you're making excuses, man. You are nothing but a class guy. Your record speaks for itself, and so does your resume. I'm so excited that you're back in the fold here at Bellator because, you know, I think that right away you're one of the top guys there. Do you feel the same? Yeah, you know, I'll tell, I've told people this. Um, I have retired before. I came out, and I have very valid reasons for retiring. Uh, but this time, I think I'm more dangerous than ever. Because I don't want this to come off the wrong way. It's almost like I don't care. I don't care about titles. Um, I don't really even care about winning or losing. All I want to do is go out there. I want to put on a show. I want people to want to watch me fight. And I just want to keep my job. You know, you know if I go out there and I go three and three, and, and it's three knockouts and three losses, but Bellator loves me and they pay me right, I, I want to stick around. Let my body, you know, fill me a spot. So I'm not worried about title shots. I'm not worried about being in the top ten. But I tell you this: I can beat anybody, you know, in that in that organization in that weight class. Yeah, I think so. I think that uh, you're one of the the very best in not just Bellator, but I think you're one of the very best in the world. I'm happy that uh, you're going to get your chance to to prove that now, gentlemen. You mentioned that you didn't want it to come out the wrong way. That you don't care. Now I know what you mean, though. You know, a fighter that has that kind of mentality is going to be a very dangerous fighter. Do you see that that new wrinkle to your game or that that new mindset of just really not caring about anything else except for just doing what you want to do? Do you feel that that's going to take you to the next level? My next level is I just want to feed my family. And I've had an entire career of kind of fighting safe. Um, I've always wanted to win. I've always wanted to get the win bonus, all that. But now I think that with my new approach to fighting, uh, I think I'm going to accomplish a lot more. You know, I think that my short submission loss was better than me going out there and laying on him for three rounds. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, don't nobody want to see that. Yeah. So I'd rather lose a fight where I went out there and, and, you know, swung for the fences and try to take him out and got caught than go out there and grind somebody for, you know, three rounds and put the fans to sleep. Because it- really, man, we, we are in this for ourselves. But at the same time, without Bellator, we don't have any, a platform. So my job is to go out there and make people want to watch Bellator. For sure. What was it like, man, being a part of uh, such a historic card for Bellator, really? I mean, when you think about it, the main card was just, it was bananas. You know, it's funny because a lot of people say, do you get, I get nervous only for competition of the, the fear of the unknown, you know, what can happen in the cage. But as far as being on the big stage, 
I, you know, I wrestled in the NCAA championships. I've done comedy shows in front of thousands of people. It wasn't, it wasn't a bad thing. Um, I was more caught up in a moment after my fight. But before that, it was just like, I'm going to go in here. I don't care how big the cage is. I didn't get to walk around the cage of Metton. I didn't get to see the venue before I got there. I was backstage. I walked out. I fought. Wow. Um, I just, I just wanted to go out there and just, man, I just wanted to put it down, man. I wanted to put on a show. I guess I did, you know. <laughs> I think the storyline was more entertaining than the fight, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, it's like, look at this guy on four days notice trying to, you know, knock this guy out. <laughs> so, um, yeah, man, it, it was cool. Um, after I fought though, I sat in the back. I, I wanted to cry, but I didn't only because it ended so quickly and how it ended. And I said, man, I'm at, I'm at, you know, Bellator and Fedor is about to fight. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, they took care of me and I got dressed and took my ass out there and watched the fight. <laughs> Anytime Fedor fights, it's still got that that buzz in the air, no doubt, right? It's crazy. It was it was unreal. It was like Michael Jordan came out, dude. Yeah, that's what I compare it to too. To people that don't know the sport as well, I, that's who I compare. It. I compare it to Michael Jordan because who else? You know, that's the only person you really can compare it to. Hey, and I got a picture with him when he wouldn't take pictures with nobody. Wow, <laughs> look at that. So uh, you mentioned that you would rather go out the way you did than lay on a guy for 15 minutes. And I just want to say, you're not a guy to make excuses, as you've already, you know, as you already said, but I don't know if there's really any middleweight in the world that that could have done what you did and not got submitted by Lovato. Lovato is, I think he's probably one of the two best guys in the world at jiu-jitsu. So, well, uh, I'll tell you this. It was a situation. I, I can go on the ground with anybody. If you look at my record, I fought Jorge Santiago, who's a black belt. I fought David Branch, who's a Henzo Gracie black belt. Mm-hmm. I fought Fabio Leopoldo, who's a multiple time world champion. Fantastic, He's in my yeah. first few fights as a fighter. It was the situation. It was the fact that we hit the ground early and I, and I wasn't sweaty at all. Mm-hmm. Um, me fighting him on the ground dry is almost like going to his gym and putting the E on. Yeah. He's going to whoop my ass. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, straight up. I mean, so I, I was in his world. It, it was perfect for him. It, it was like the perfect scenario because he knew the longer the fight went, the harder it was going to be to get a hold of me. And mm-hmm. it just happened so quick. You know, what more could he ask for? Yeah, and plus, uh, you know, you do pack a hell of a punch too. So I'm sure he didn't want to, you know, he didn't want to be on the receiving end of one of those. No, and I, I've, I've just, man, I've had a career of really fighting to not get beat, to not get hurt to uh, you know, make sure I get my other half of my pay. Um, it, it's just, I'm, I was bored. I was bored fighting. I was tired of fighting to survive. Even though I was knocking people out, I wasn't creating a lot of action. I, I was just, I wanted to get it over with, and I was forgetting that it was a fight, it was entertainment, people want to watch. And that's how I get paid, not just by winning. I just want to go out there and just throw down. And I'll tell you this, I, I don't like the pay structure of, of uh, fighting for half your money. I do like the flat pay structure. It's just so more comfortable, you know. The pay structure that Bellator has. They they get. I mean, they give. They have options. You know, you have to earn the right to get flat pay Bellator. Oh, okay. So I'll work my way up to that. But I'll tell you, um, they are cool as hell. Rich and all the people I met, Scott Coker. It just felt like it almost felt like wrestling again. Like everybody knew me. Like people that were famous knew me. I was like, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Anytime Bellator comes uh, to the Midwest, uh, I cover them, and they do have a very, uh, it's like a very... It's f- a home feel. It really is, yeah, it really is. How I didn't feel UFC? like I was going to lose my job. Like it just, I felt like an, I was at an old wrestling. Yeah. Everybody knew everybody was harder to kick each other's ass and be cool after. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Well, I, I, man, I'm glad they took care of you, and I'm glad that you got a new, uh, new fight deal because, uh, as I said... No bullshit. I think that you, uh, man, if you look at the Bellator middleweight roster now, you're one of the most exciting guys they have from uh, from jump. So I'm I'm excited. And that's what I want to be, man. I just hope my fight's a big one, and they, uh, you know, they put me back on TV and I can go around. I think people want to see see more out of me. Oh, definitely. But I, I do want to say this, man. Uh, everybody I did meet, all the fighters, regardless of what people think of them, uh, everybody was cool. Frank Mir, the who was it? Was a guy named Dylan Dennis, McGregor's fighter. Yeah, Dylan Dennis. I know he has a hell of a personality, but in person, <laughs> he was cool as hell. Like he, 
he showed me props for my loss. And I mean, he was just really cool backstage. He was, he was an athlete, you know, I know. And I like what he's doing. He's, he's definitely drawing a lot of attention and I can't blame him, but everybody was just, it was cool. I, I want to stay there, man. Well, I definitely think you found a home, man. I don't think uh, I don't think you're going anywhere anytime soon. I appreciate your time. Is there anything else you'd like to add? The floor is yours. Sponsors, anything you'd like, man? Nah, man. I want to thank Bellator for having me. Never saw it coming. You know, I was a free agent. Um, I've had some offers from a lot of organizations, and they gave me the best um, opportunity to see my family, man. Thank you for having me. That's all. Anytime. I do appreciate it, Gerald. All right, thanks. <laughs>